You spoke with Stuart Rhodes' ex-wife. What did she have to say about her former husband in the wake of his arrest? Well, that's right. I spoke with Tasha Adams, who uh, is the former wife of, uh, of Rhodes, and uh, as a matter of fact, uh, left him in, in 2018. You know, the ADL describes this group as a large but loosely organized collection of right-wing anti-government extremists who are part of the militia movement, which believes that the federal government has been co-opted by a shadowy conspiracy that is trying to strip American citizens of their rights. Adam says, look, you know, what this guy truly believes, what Rhodes, Rhodes truly, truly believes in, is himself as a historical figure. She says he has compared himself to such transformative figures as the founding fathers, Martin Luther King Jr., and other transformative figures in the U.S. And she says that his militant behavior is, quote, all about fulfilling his own mythology. Uh, the mission is about an opportunity for himself to self-promote. Uh, interestingly, you know, in yesterday's indictment, it showed that he had purchased, uh, according to uh, federal prosecutors and, and the grand jury, in the uh, grand jury that heard the case, approximately seventeen thousand five hundred dollars in hundreds of rounds of ammunition, scopes, gun parts, uh, other gun paraphernalia. Following January sixth uh, of twenty twenty one. Uh, Adam says, though, despite uh, his militant talk and weapons purchases, uh, all fueled, uh, she believes, by donations from the Oath Keepers, uh, from, from people to the Oath Keepers and membership fees, uh, apparently he's not very handy with a gun. She says he's not a very good shot. Um, really uh, 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 kind of an uh, interesting figure and somebody who, you know, based on our research and reporting into some of these groups in the past, uh, Rhodes is very much in line with other leaders of it. Um, somebody who's got a, some sort of a military background. He's a U.S. Army veteran, uh, somebody who's a graduate of Yale Law School. Uh, and if, you're, if you've seen a picture of him and you're looking at the eye patch and wondering how he got that, uh, well, apparently it was when he dropped a loaded gun and uh, the round, uh, uh, the gun fired and a round went into his eye and into his face. So uh, quite, uh, quite an individual, quite a backstory, and obviously – uh, some very uh, dangerous rhetoric. Interesting for you to get some of those details, Tom. I mean, we know you mentioned Yale Law School, military background. Uh, what else are we learning about Rhodes? Did you get a sense from the ex-wife that, that th he had changed or his viewpoints had changed over time, or, or was he always like this in her mind? Yeah, that, that's a really interesting, uh, interesting point. And there's always a pivot, right? So we see this typically in somebody's life. Something changes. Uh, she thinks it was around the time, frankly, that he was uh, that he was shot, that he started to uh, espouse these, uh, uh, and, and he shot himself, to be clear, that he started to espouse these more uh, kind of extremist-type views. She helped form and totally denounces uh, the Oath Keepers now and any sort of these beliefs, but helped form it in March of 2009. Uh, that's when this kind of all started uh, to take off. And over time, you know, the group's beliefs have, have really kind of changed. At first, a, a more anti-government, non-political, not backing any candidate, uh, to turning it into something that has turned decisive, decisively uh, pro-Trump. And obviously, uh, that's why we're looking at, uh, uh, at these sedition charges and the allegations that the Justice Department brought forward yesterday.